I like lots of brown because one, it is packed with crunchy munchy goodness. Two, each spoonful contains vitamins A, B, B2, C, D and E. <laughs> hmm. And three, it keeps me going throughout the day. Yeah, well it would, wouldn't it? <laughs> I see the newspapers haven't arrived then. What? No, I'm not reading it. I'm doing a competition. Hey, how's this for a slogan? What? Lots of bran has lots of bulk. No need to sit for hours and sulk. <laughs> that is not nice, George. All right, well, what about this one then? Lots of bran, let's have a bit. Next thing you know, you're that having... That is <laughs> I don't know why you're going for these daft competitions. You never win. Well, I won the crossword thing. Oh, yeah. And they disqualified you after they found you were over nine. <laughs> you never encourage me, do you? You never say, this time you can do it, George. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't talking about that. I'm talking about the competition. I'm going to send it off today. Have you got a tuck me open stamp up in there? Oh, God, no wonder you never win. George, no, I haven't. It, it, oops, I'm going to be late. Oh, well, where are you going? Uh, it's my keep fit class, George. Every Tuesday and Thursday. You'll be getting muscles, you will. Well, it's about time someone in the family had them. <laughs> I mean, you get out of breath every time you cross your legs. <laughs> That's right, go on, try and make me feel small. I shall go before I say something I might regret. <laughs> Why, stupid, prancing around, waving your wasp names. <laughs> oh. oh, blimey. On the week after the week after the week of the next pocket money. Mm, let me see. Pocket money book. Uh, you already had it. Well, the week after that then. Look, you can't go on and on borrowing money like a Labour Chancellor. <laughs> What's it for? I want to send off for a poster of the Stranglers. For who? <laughs> no, the Stranglers. They're a pop group. Ah, Freddy and the Dreamers, that sort of thing. Who? <laughs> Tristram, when I was your age and I wanted extra pocket money, I used to work for it. Cleaning cars, doing a paper round. Climbing up chimneys. Climbing up chimneys. <laughs> it is never too soon, Anne, for him to learn the work ethic. Quite right. Get out there with a tray of matches. I'd rather do a paper round. I can use all the comics for nothing. Oh. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, oh, morning. Uh, I wonder if you could let me have a stamp. Oh, very well. As long as you let me have it back. Well, I can't. I'm going to stick it on the letter and post it. <laughs> Is Mildred going shopping this morning? What? No, she's gone off to the keep fit classes with you. You haven't gone. No, I don't when they're not holding them. Hey? Well, they're finishing in August. They're not beginning again till next month. Yeah, but... Mildred's been going every Tuesday and Thursday for weeks. Well, I don't see her. <laughs> yes, well, perhaps I'm wrong. Well, if she isn't keeping fit, what is she doing? <laughs> Mrs Roper, I'll drive up to the common, we'll put the old plates on, and you can try a few hill starts. Oh, that'll be starting a car on the hill. I couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> Here we go then, Truffles. Eyes down for a major prize, eh? <laughs> Quick rub on the bumper luck. <laughs> that was Mildred. With a man. Mildred. Uh, yes, love? Excuse me for interrupting, but I do hope I haven't landed you in it. <coughs> Pardon? Well, I've told Mr Roper that the Keep Fit classes are finished. Ah. Boo-boo. Boo-boo. Big boo-boo? No, a little boo-boo. You see, uh, actually, I didn't want him to know that I was taking driving lessons. Driving? Shush! <laughs> oh. Is that all? Yeah. Well, what do you think I was up to? Well, oh, I should be so lucky. No, it's just that, you see, if George found out, he'd insist on teaching me to drive himself. Well, you haven't got a car anymore. Oh, that wouldn't stop him. Oh, do you know, I remember, he tried to teach me once. Got the language. 
and the temper tantrums. And I was only adjusting my seatbelt. <laughs> Geoffrey was just as bad. He wouldn't let me drive more than 20 miles an hour. Oh, he never got as far as moving off. <laughs> he jumped out as soon as I started the engine. <laughs> Geoffrey didn't do that. He fainted occasionally. <laughs> Well, you see, this Mr. Bowes, you know, from the Avenue, he's a retired uh, driving instructor. Oh, and he, oh, he's such a gentleman. He never swears at me. Good. Yeah. His lips move, but never out loud. <laughs> uh, but you, uh, would you like a cup of coffee, dear? No, thanks, love. I only popped in to apologise. I suppose you'll have to tell Mr. Roper now. Oh, God. yes. I mean, he's probably imagining all sorts. Ooh. <laughs> Mildred, there's something I demand to know. Yes? Is there any sugar in this? <laughs> yes? I, uh, I, I saw a woman this morning, spitting image of you, in a car with another man. Oh, really? Well, well, well. Well, it couldn't have been you, of course. Not if you were at your keep fit classes. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I'm not a jealous man, Mildred. Aren't you? I wonder. Well, there's nothing to be jealous about. I mean, if it was you, you'd probably have a perfectly good explanation. Yes. Well, what is it? What's what? <laughs> the explanation. You said it couldn't be me. Let's put it another way. What's the most important thing in a marriage? Well... Uh... Honesty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. Well, then, trust in each other. I mean, I read a piece in the paper the other day about this woman who started mucking about with another fellow after 20-odd years of marriage. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Her husband accused her of it. I think I read it. She hit him with an axe. <laughs> Have we got any biscuits? Uh, hello, son. Hmm? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you on your own, are you? Not anymore, it seems. Huh. I expect you could do with a bit of a chat, seeing as you're on your own. No. Good. <clears throat> yes, son, um, supposing it came to your attention that your wife was mucking about with another fella. What? I mean, well, would you have it out with her, you know, accuse her? My wife mucking about? Is she? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't mean your wife. Well, I mean, she may be for all I know. No, no, it's, um, it's a mate of mine, his wife. A mate of yours? Mm. Uh, what would you do if you were me? You know, had to advise him, I mean. Well, if I was a mate of yours, it's most unlikely, but if I was, I would ask myself if it was partly my fault. My fault? Well, his fault. Now, have I been a loving husband? Oh, well, yeah, he's always done his duty, never flinched. Well, only last month he had to uh, go... I up don't and... think I want to know the details. Can... Has he, uh, this mate, kept the romance alive in the marriage? Well, there wasn't a lot to start with. Yeah. Flowers, chocolates, little gifts, a night out occasionally. Oh, he don't bother with all that rubbish. He sounds to me like an insensitive clod. A selfish oaf. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> <laughs> he should start wooing her all over again. That's my advice. Yeah. Flowers, chocolates. Hey, it might work. That's a good idea. Uh, you having another scotch? Oh, yes, thank you. Right. Excuse me. He wants another scotch over there. Good night, son. <laughs> right. At or near a road junction. A bend... A brow of the hill on a humpty back road. I'm home, Mildred. It's me, your husband. Oh. And there was I expecting Steve McQueen. Oh, so it's him. What? <laughs> uh, nothing, nothing. I'm... I mean, I'm probably partly to blame. Uh, Mildred, I've bought you something. Mm -hmm. A bag of rebels. <laughs> oh, thank you, George. Well, they're cheaper than a box and you get more. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I brought you these, Mildred. 
Roses for Rose. <laughs> oh, George. <coughs> well, they're chrysanthemums, but the thought was there. <laughs> oh, thank you, love. No, I haven't finished yet, Mildred. <coughs> um, you're looking quite... quite... <laughs> quite lovely this evening, Mildred. <laughs> <laughs> Can't I pay you a compliment without being legless? Oh, no, George. Oh, oh thank you. I mean, they're, they're very nice. Yeah, and uh, I suggest after dinner tonight we, um, well, we, uh, we have an early night for you. Oh, what? We have an early night. There, I've said it. Oh, George! <laughs> Hey, careful, Mildred, you're squashing me revels. My ribs have gone. <laughs> uh, perhaps when I fell out of bed. <laughs> ah, here we are. Bacon and sausage and kidney. Oh, lots of meat for my little tiger. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. What's the matter, precious? I haven't got the strength to get the lid off the filler sound. <laughs> There we go. There, you see? Now, you sit down, save your strength. Yeah. What for? Shall we eat your breakfast? Oh, no, no, I don't want any of that. Just a cup of, cup of coffee and a handful of them. Oh. Here we are. Uh, George, did you mean what you said last night? What, about oil in the springs? <laughs> about taking me out tonight? Yeah. I want us to do what we used to do when we were courting. Oh, lovely. Where will we find an air raid shelter? <laughs> no, no, no. Go to the pictures and a spot of supper afterwards. Oh, yes. It's ages. Of... What was the last film we saw? Oh. Nympho Night Nurse. Together? <laughs> well, I don't know. It had Will A in it. <laughs> Quite a while back. <laughs> yeah. It, where are we going to eat tonight? Oh, well, you know the new French restaurant that opened in the High Street? Mm -hmm. You know, with the velvet curtains and the doorman outside? Oh, yes! I thought we'd go to the fish and chip shop next door. <laughs> right, we know what the best thing is for a cold, don't we? A whiskey and soda. <laughs> you can't always go by your father. Come on, open up. That's it. Ugh. I think I'd rather have a cold. Mm. <laughs> ah, Tristram. I've got it for you. What? Do you remember what you asked for yesterday? A Stranglers poster. No, 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 no. A job. A newspaper round. I talked to Mr Updike at the corner shop, a fellow Rotarian, and you start tomorrow. How's that? Great. Have to be up at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well, we all have to make sacrifices. Oh, and what's yours? Well, the bed gets cold when you leave it. There you go. Two rock salmon and chips. Salt, vinegar, curry powder on the table. <laughs> Who's next? Oh, ah, it's a good film, wasn't it? It's a bit near the knuckle, though. It was halfway up the arm. <laughs> I didn't realise Julie Andrews did that sort of thing. Well, 
No, no, she was in Cinema One, we were in Cinema Two. <laughs> yeah, Confessions of a Sewage Worker and a Manual in Newcastle. <laughs> I mean, in my day, you used to cut to waves breaking. You knew where you were. Oh, yeah, and rockets taking off. Quiet. Trains entering tunnels, volcanoes erupting. Yeah, yeah, all right. Oh, George, can, couldn't we have come somewhere nicer than this? Well, it's the sort of place we used to go to when we were caught in. Huh? Cotton chips and uh, pickled onion. Yeah, but when we were young then, George. I mean, when you get older, you, you want more. Oh, right. Two pickled onions and cotton chips twice, please. <laughs> uh, I don't suppose you serve wine? Oh, at last, no. But I could do you an impertinent little lemonade. Chilled or room temperature. Grown on the southern slopes of a chemical vat in Darlington. Now, two cups of tea. Ah, oh, there's a table, Mildred. Uh, could we have them over there? Uh, well, I'll do my best, uh, but me aim ain't as good as it used to be. <laughs> oh, George, look at that. Ah, yeah. I can feel it all coming back, Mildred. You haven't eaten anything yet. <laughs> no, 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 the feeling. You know, us alone together out on the town enjoying ourselves. Well, you did sort of enjoy the film, didn't you? Well, it... The nicest part was when you put your hand on my knee. You haven't done that for ages. Oh, yeah. I didn't put my hand on your knee. <laughs> Two cotton chips, two cups of tea, two pickled onions, that'll be one pound eighty. All oh, right, oh, your turn, Mildred. I'll pay for the pictures. <laughs> yeah, it's what we used to do. No, it isn't. I used to pay for the pictures as well. <laughs> Morning, darling. Mm. Oh, did Tristram get off on his paper round all right? He's got a cold, Geoffrey. I'm not sending him out in the pouring rain. Do you mean to say he's still up in bed? Yes, and I'm keeping him off school. But he'll be letting Mr. Up Down Dyke. Uh, <laughs> dyke Down Up. Uh, up Dyke Down. So? So I gave him my word as a fellow Rotarian. Well, you go and do his paper round then. Me? But it's raining out there. And check driving mirror. Check gear is in neutral. Flutter eyelashes at examiner. Uh, <laughs> Switch on, ignition, hand signal, flutter eyelashes again, hand into first. Good morning, George. Oh, uh, good morning. Oh, I think the two pickled onions was a mistake. <laughs> I had a shocking nightmare. I know. You were talking in your sleep. Yeah. And who is Bountiful Bridget? <laughs> Don't you remember? She was in the confessions film. You know, big girl. Every time she turned round, the first three rows ducked. <laughs> yes, well, it's all a bit bread and bread to me, George. So, it was a nice evening, wasn't it? Strolling home under the stars, down Mugger's Lane. <laughs> there were quite a few other courting couples, did you notice? We fell over, two of them. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't really enjoy the evening, did you? Well, it... Well, you, you made an effort, George, and I appreciate it. Well, I've been making quite a lot of efforts lately, Mildred. I yeah, know. I want things to be the same as they were before between us. Oh. I think I'd rather have them the way they are now. <laughs> oh, whoops, I'm going to be late. Now, look, George, I'll put the kettle on. You'll have to make your own breakfast. Yeah, but where are you going? It's Thursday, my keep fit class. Is that Mildred? I forbid it. <laughs> hey, you're not to see this Steve McQueen fellow again. <laughs> oh, damn. Yes? Um, Mr. Roper, is it? Yeah, come in. I've come to pick up your wife. I, I... <laughs> Hang on! It's him! It's you! You're him! Uh, yes. I've driven here to save your wife from walking round to my house for rain, you see. Come inside. I want a word with you, McQueen. <laughs> oh! Don't you take that attitude with me. <laughs> Go inside. We'll have this out man to man. That's right. That's right. Well, come on down. Right, sit down. Now, right, listen. I know all about what's been going on with you and her. Oh. So what's the meaning of it, eh? Well, it's, uh, it's a little embarrassing, but I believe she thinks I'd be better at it than you are. <laughs> 
What? <laughs> well, I've had a lot of experience, you see. Uh, four, sometimes five in a day. <laughs> I mean, she's been discussing me with you. Oh, she merely said that the last time you tried it, you lost interest. <laughs> Gave it up as a bad job. So she turned to you? Yes. Yeah. Mind you, now that I'm getting on a bit, I don't take on as many, of course. <laughs> Just uh, your wife on Tuesdays and Thursdays and the <laughs> vicar's daughter on Saturday nights. <laughs> You've met my husband. Yes, he has, and he's told me the whole story. All right, so now you know. Well, let's get started. Hang on! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't pay you for last Tuesday. <laughs> you mean you pay him for... Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I don't expect him to teach me to drive for nothing. I've never heard anything so disgusting in all my life. <laughs> teach you what? To drive. I've got my test. Look, at ten o'clock. Test? Mm. You'll need that for the examiner, Mrs. Roper. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, that's just, just me. You mean you and him together <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, what? Well, I thought you and him went <laughs> to I'm going to talk you to drive. Now, don't let's start that. Shall we go? Yeah, but Mildred. Yeah? I wouldn't have charged you as much. <laughs> I mean, anybody can teach drive... Oh, hang on, yeah. I see what you mean. You have the vicar's daughter on Saturday for driving lessons. Mind your own business. <laughs> Wish me luck, George. Oh, oh, morning, Mr Fourmile. Morning. Oh. Is it that, Mildred? What are you doing round here, then, son? I'm delivering newspapers. Let me see, you're the uh, Financial Times and the Economist, aren't you? No, the sun and the beano. <laughs> I've gone wrong again. <laughs> Fallen on our times, are we doing a bit of moonlighting? I don't wish to discuss it. Now, will you please take these? All right, if it'll uh, help you out, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Oh, hang on, hang on. Uh, I didn't, uh, didn't give a Christmas box last year. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> ah, useless newspaper. Call that a page three. <laughs> oh, there you are, George. The only woman on it is Margaret Thatcher, and she's dressed. <laughs> George, I've passed. Look, look, I've passed. Oh, congratulations. Oh, I thought he'd fail me when I accidentally put his knee into gear. <laughs> well, he didn't seem to mind. So you can drive a car now, eh? Yes, and now I'm going to save up for a nice little second-hand <coughs> mini. Oh, we can do better than that, Mildred. Pardon? Well, uh, I had a letter this morning from one of the competitions you sneer at, and I've won a prize. Well, what sort of prize? Latest model of the Jaguar XJS. Oh. Mildred, yeah. I'm giving it to you. Oh, sure. <laughs>